What up, everyone? This episode is brought to you by HelloFresh. We know how it is at this point. We've been talking about it. With HelloFresh, you get pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Here's what HelloFresh does. They cut out the sucky part of cooking. And I love cooking. I Cooking is like literally one of my favorite activities. When I'm not working, driving cars, or talking about cars, I'm cooking meals that take a really long time, but even that, which is one of my favorite recreational activities, has sucky parts, like trying to decide what to eat, what to make, and then buying ingredients at the store that might not come in the appropriately measured quantity, so you have to either buy way more than you need of something or buy multiple packages of something to, to, to make the recipe that you need. HelloFresh solves this, right? They offer 50 menu and market items each week, including ready-to-eat salads, sandwiches, and soups, but also make-from-scratch items. There's something for everyone to enjoy with recipes designed and tested by professional chefs and nutritional experts to ensure deliciousness and simplicity and you just choose what you want. They send the packages to your door each week, right? Contact free. And and basically, everything you need to cook that meal is right there in that bag, pre-measured, okay? And you get a really easy chart, uh, recipe chart. You can just kind of glance at it real quickly to make this stuff pre-measured, pre-portioned, so there's really no food waste. It's great. It doesn't take up a lot of room in your fridge. Super flexible. You can always change your plan uh, whenever you want. It was so good. Hannah and I kept doing it uh, after our free uh, ad read <laughs> food uh, ran out. We just we kept it going. The food was great, and it inspired me to cook things I wouldn't have thought to cook in my normal repertoire. It opened my horizons for cooking. You can, too. Go to HelloFresh.com slash smoking tire 14 and use code smoking tire 14 for up to 14 free meals plus free shipping right hellofresh.com smoking tire 14 and code smoking tire 14 for up to 14 free meals plus free shipping Woo! hellofresh is america's number one meal kit for a reason it's delicious i like it a lot Speaking of things I like a lot, J.B. Weld. J.B. Weld is one of those things. Not only is it the world's strongest bond, it's so good at its job, it's like a verb, right? Like you can, it's not just like I'm going to fix this using J.B. Weld. It's I'm going to J.B. Weld it, like Google. Like it's a, it's a verb. You, J, you J.B. Weld it to fix it. That's how you know something is like really good and efficient at its job when it's so the standard that you can verb it up. It's amazing. Whether it's DIY projects, automotive repairs, plumbing, marines, or marines. I wouldn't fix a marine <laughs> with JB Weld. There's probably an asterisk on the bo a box not to use it on a marine. But marine applications like your boat, uh, projects big and small at home in your garage, use JB Weld. In fact, JB Weld products can be used on practically anything. Metal, wood, plastics, glass, ceramics, and more. Not marines. Not, not humans. Marines. When so I was in high school, I uh, cracked the Jeep bumper cover on our Jeep, mm -hmm. and it was hanging off. And uh, my dad used JB Weld to reseal it, and 15 years later, it was still still, there. still holding strong. Yep. yep. You can keep some JB Weld in the toolbox, keep it in your kitchen drawer, keep it in the back of your truck. Speaking of trucks, JB Weld acquired Herculiner, the original DIY truck bed liner. So if you're looking for the world's strongest truck bed liner, Herculiner has you covered there as well. Go be your strongest self. Use JB Weld, the world's strongest bond. JB Weld epoxy products are made proudly in the USA and available at jbweld.com, Walmart, Amazon, Home Depot, Lowe's, AutoZone, Advanced Auto Parts, Napa, O'Reilly, Michaels, and more. JB Weld. Just JB Weld it. That's the that's the tagline. Mm -hmm. JB Weld it. You know that like tagline? If you can't duck it, fuck it. If you can't JB Weld it, all hope is lost. <laughs> that's true. Because JB Weld can fix the things you can't duck. <laughs> Just about everything. <laughs> you know? uh, and of course, we're brought to you by NordVPN. Listen, privacy. Privacy. Privacy is good. Okay, and if you were gonna say, take a poop in a public bathroom, 
right? You're probably going to close the stall door unless you're some kind of sick voyeur that wants someone to see into your toilet life. Now, think of your computer as your toilet life. In fact, depending on who you are, they might be one and the same. You don't want people looking in there, unless you really do, but most of you probably don't, right? Close that stall door with NordVPN. You can access content from over 59 countries by changing your virtual location. Geo restrictions no longer become an issue. Plus, if you're traveling and use unsecure airport or restaurant Wi-Fi, public Wi-Fi, that's your restroom. It's public Wi-Fi is where Data hackers steal your data. You get on that Wi-Fi, your computer's unsecured. They're just sitting there at the cafe looking good. Maybe they got a nice like jacket on. Maybe they're like winking at you. Maybe they're flirting. At the, it's not necessarily the 400 pound fat guy. They have good looking hackers too. I've seen those movies. That's how they steal your, your stuff. If you use NordVPN, that's how you keep your peace of mind while you're traveling and using public Wi-Fi. Now, VPNs in general have a reputation for slowing down inter internet speed, but not with NordVPN. It is the world's fastest VPN, so you don't have to sacrifice internet speed for better security. Your internet traffic is rerouted through a secure encrypted tunnel, which protects your data and privacy. And you can also download NordVPN on up to six devices at once. Now, I know when I'm going to poop, I like to close the door. Some people might think differently, but I like to make sure that door is closed. Close the door when you poop on the internet as well. Go to nordvpn.com slash smoking tire or use code tire to get a two year plan plus a bonus gift with a huge discount. There's a 30 day money back guarantee if NordVPN is not for you, so there's no risk, but two year plan plus a bonus gift with a huge discount at nordvpn.com slash smoking tire or code tire. And of course, our friends, TCF, Tradecraft Farms, the official, you know, entertainment provider of the Smoking Tire podcast. Whether it's uh, cannabinoids, uh, uh, CBD, pens, aerosols, uh, or just pure, delightful flowers, Tradecraft Farms has got you covered. If you are here in the promised land, California, where these types of things are available at retail outlets, pick up some at their Tradecraft Farms official retail boutiques. If you're not in town, just give them a follow. Tradecraft underscore farm, farms. Let them know I sent you over to the gram. And then think about it when you do come to town. We've got you covered at Tradecraft Farms, the official THC and CBD provider of the Smoking Tire podcast. Alrighty, folks, on this episode, uh, a dude I've seen on TV for many, many years. I'm excited to finally talk to him. Uh, he was one of the co-hosts of the show Mythbusters. Super, super, super successful show. Ran 12 seasons, which is enormous in American television. And uh, Tori was a huge part of that. Uh, he is into cars, and he has a new show on the Motor Trend Network, along with our friends Busy as a Rioja and uh, Faye Hadley from Two Girls Garage. Uh, it's Tori Billy the host of the new Motor Mythbusters on the Motor Trend Network. It's the Smoking Tire Podcast. Thanks for your time, man. I'm sorry for this. Uh, yeah, totally. Mild delay of game. I'm, I'm like a, I was like an enormous, enormous Mythbusters fan. Enormous. Oh, Watch yeah. all that shit. What a fun show. It's like Growing the best up, job ever. It was. It literally was the best job ever. I mean, it still is. It's crazy that we're back doing it again. Is it the same uh, with Motor Mythbusters? Is this the same production company and all that, or is it is it just where we've borrowed the name because it makes sense? No, it's the same production company. I am the only returning uh, Mythbuster from the original cast. Um, so I have two new co-hosts, uh, BC and Faye, and they're both like genius car, you know, yeah. gearheads in their own right. Like they're geniuses and. Um, it's been great. I mean, it's weird. It's very weird. Like the first day on set, you know, we're, we're filming and it's like, I'm looking around and it's like, ah, I'm getting deja vu. Well, you know? is it weird though? Like, it's, is it weird being on that set and getting the deja vu, but like, it's all different people and you're like, oh, this is yes. kind of strange. 
Like I love Busy. Strange. I've known Busy for like six years, and that dude is—he's the homie. I love him. He builds—he uh, he builds the silliest, stupidest shit in the world, and he knows it's silly and stupid, and it's great. <laughs> but he is a genius. Oh like, yeah, that guy is a like he is brilliant, and he's just like a, allowing us to do stuff that we would never be able to do in the old days because he, he's so technologically. Uh, brilliant that he can just he's like oh let me check the data on this oh let me hook this up to the engine oh we'll figure out how much and i'm just sitting there going okay i'll just smile and crash some stuff <laughs> well he puts you know when i say he builds silly shit i don't mean he builds it haphazardly or badly he he, he right. puts a ten he professionally builds things that have very little objective real purpose <laughs> it's just like right. like, that's like the minivan the perfect minivan? example did you drive like, it no well, I see it. He's you gotta drive he's it. it to work but I, I got it i mean he's got him he's got like multiple cars he's like oh you gotta try this one out you gotta try this one out i'm like bc you keep telling me to try these out like when are you gonna dude you gotta it's the van is worth your time like like seriously make the time i made a whole film with yeah. the van reviewing it up in the canyons and <laughs> you know it's a th for those who have no idea what we're talking about it's a thousand horsepower odyssey Big single turbo on a, is it a J-series Zec V6, whatever, the, the three and a half liter V6. Mm -hmm. Big turbo, manual swap, front wheel drive, and busy. <laughs> BC's like, we kept blowing gearboxes, and we found the solution <laughs> was to just put terrible tires. And so, <laughs> and so having Dude, shitty tires... <laughs> <laughs> would really that save the gearbox impersonation of him <laughs> i told you i know him well i've recorded like oh, mad voiceover oh. of him he's he is so <laughs> proper i think i i might have tainted him because like when he came in he was like all oh, you know polite and like oh i would like the opportunity to help you build yeah. this and then by the end of it he was just being a sarcastic jerk just like me he is, but when you put a camera on him, he, he without a script or anything, like he speaks in voiceover. It's so fucking yeah. weird. He doesn't have to do yeah. voiceover because he just does it there. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, it's weird. Just like get a like, room come tone. On, We're good. <laughs> break, break come on, talk real with me. You sound like a script. Dude, he's, yeah. I mean, he's a genius and it's just crazy. And, uh, and I, that van. So the thing is when you, when you put shitty tires on a thousand horsepower minivan in order to save the gearbox from eating itself, the, there's two things happen. One is you have very little handling or stopping power because those tires yeah. have other jobs. And then you can do burnouts in any gear at any speed. <laughs> so just pick a gear. Doesn't matter. And he'll do smash the throttle and you will light the fucking tires right off. And just, do, 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 do. Like you know, it's amazing. <laughs> and so you've driven it. Oh yeah. Obviously. I did like, I put like yeah. 200 miles on it. Yeah. It was awesome. Well, he, he brought it. He, he brought, he like, he's so ridiculous. I'm just, I'm like a minivan. Really? I mean, yeah. it's like of all the vehicles, I go, what, are you going to go drop the kids off at soccer practice? And then he's like, gets in and he's like burning wheelies. And it sounds, you know, because it's got that dump exhaust, it, you know, it sounds like an F1 car. So if you rip that thing <laughs> up the block, you know, and people look around like they're expecting to see like a GTR with like a giant <laughs> right. wing or, you know, and then right. this van. <laughs> and they're like, they're like, where's that sound coming from? Yeah, All I best. see is this ridiculous purple van. Oh, the best, the best. Are you? I mean, obviously, you're. You know, you're. You're into machines and stuff like that. Or were you before doing this? Did you consider yourself a gearhead, really? Yeah, you know, like on this show, it's and, and that's kind of partially why they asked me to come back to do it. Um, originally, they had, you know, they said, "Hey, we're going to redo MythBusters," and and my first thought was I was a little hesitant just because it's like I'm, we've already done it. Like, why? It, we you know we did it it was a success I, i'm not sure if i want to come back and they're like well we're going to be doing all like, we left the, we left the inbox <laughs> open uh the whole time turns out there's like uh ten thousand myths uh we need to bust yeah. <laughs> there's, yeah. a dem <laughs> there's this gmail Since address it's just full of them <laughs> these, these myths have just been piling up yeah. yeah and so and so when they told me it was going to be about motor mythbusters on motor trend uh i got excited just because in the original series, whenever we were doing car stuffs, I was like, 
giddy because I love yeah. driving fast. I love, you know, racing. I love, uh, you know, just stunt driving. Like we used to have guys come out like, like, uh, highway patrol officers who, you know, would train us how to do the pit maneuvers, how to get out of a, you know, a spin, you know, they, so, so when they were saying that we're going to do the whole show is going to be around cars, um, uh, that's when they, they got me. Yeah, that's, I mean that's a it's that's probably a, a pretty easy sell. If you're like, oh, every day is a car stunt day. It's awesome, an awesome concept. Yeah. That's fucking awesome great. Concept. Yeah, yeah. And uh, man, some of the stuff from the old show, but like, I didn't really uh, the the other than yourself, I didn't really uh, get the vibe that anyone from the original show was really that into cars to begin with. I mean, they were you know a means to solving myths or whatever but nobody was like yeah. rolling up in their hot rod right or am i missing one that's no you're you're right on that i mean a lot of everybody was very i mean i would say adam might he was kind of into cars like he, he's got a couple of cool cars that but he's not not your typical hot rodder um and me i you know like i said i just i love driving fast i love going uh you know just driving cool cars um you know a few years maybe about five years ago uh i did the gumball rally with dead mouse and oh it was, really nice you know, it's like in, in one of his yeah, like it, uh like <laughs> meme supercars <laughs> we did yeah the first year we did uh he he did the the ferrari which he oh took yeah a, a ferrari made it look like nan cat it had like this, you know, the, the Nyan Cat. And then yeah, it was fun. I remember that. Yeah. Ferrari got pissed. But Ferrari actually, yeah. <laughs> I, would, yeah. I didn't know they could do that. They, so apparently they, yeah. they sent him a letter of cease and desist. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. And they wouldn't, they wouldn't you know, really do anything. They just wouldn't let you buy the new cars. They're not going to see. It's not, it's not a good look to sue individuals for customizing right? their own cars. That's a bad look. Yeah. But it was hilarious. Like he popped off all the ferrari emblems and put like a little cat like a leaping cat um but yeah so they they were like you know take those logos off send it back so he he like stripped it down took it back to original sold it but there was one point where when, when they sent him the letter he was like hey uh do you think we could blow up the ferrari Yes. And I'm like, yes, we can absolutely. <laughs> why would we? Like, why would you? Like, that is the dumbest idea. That's like, it's that's like how, in the last, how, in the last couple of years, a lot of people have uh, protested various uh, companies, you know, actions by destroying their own shit that they've already <laughs> right. bought. You know, yeah. like, I understand if you want to, you're angry that a company whose products you like does something or gives to the wrong politician or doesn't support the right cause or whatever, or God forbid says you have to wear masks or something like that. And, you know, fucking set my coleman cooler on fire <laughs> whatever like yeah. but it's your cooler right. like what are you doing? Right. you're gonna buy another right. one right. it's like in goodfellas yeah. she's like they spit on their own floor <laughs> yeah it doesn't make any sense to me yeah. <laughs> just give them coffee and be polite no but dead mouse very publicly went to uh became a mclaren fan after that and sp spent yeah, all the so money on all the mclarens after that so that was so after we did the first rally we did together we went from miami to ibiza and then as we were on the road we met all these guys from uh saudi arabia and they all had mclarens and they're just like yeah ferrari mclaren's the way to go but so did they tell you that like, they owned McLaren, like the company? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> so yeah like, right. Yes, we own. We can get you allocation. No problem. You just get. You right. give us number. We send. We send McLaren. It's very. It's well, best it's car. Crazy. Like these guys have so much money. I, I'm uh, a friend of mine that we. You know, since the rally, we became really good friends. Um, he the the that year he had a Hollywood company build the tumbler from Batman. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, that's fucking so, crazy. <laughs> Oh, dude, this thing looks so, I mean, it was legit. It looked just like the one from the movie. It rolled up, and it was like the little geek inside of me just teared up because I was like, oh, my God, it's a Batmobile. Yeah, a functional Batmobile? I mean, look at the shirt yeah. you're wearing. You got you got straight Michael Keaton Batman happening right now. There you go. That looks like and it so, was actually from 1990, maybe, that shirt. Was that from, yeah, is that in period? It's, 
I stole it from Michael Keaton yeah, from, the, <laughs> from the movie. From the movie said I stole it. But so uh, so we roll out of Miami and he gets on the freeway and we don't even get out of the city and the car breaks down on the side of the road. And so they couldn't finish the rally because the the tumbler exploded. The engine <laughs> blew up. And, I mean, and so. It's that that's it's like a, can I say that that might have been a little predictable to do like a multi-continent high speed road trip in a movie prop in might a six-wheeled vehicle that weighs just might not pounds. work out the way that you think it's going to. I mean But he was so pissed because he'd spent all this money getting Habibi, this vehicle. Habibi, this is fucking and- bullshit. <laughs> Did he just like get an Uber to like the Pagani dealer and buy a Wyra out of spite? That's what somebody like that would do. No, I think I think they had a follow vehicle that was also built in the same vein. I forget if they brought another. They probably had like backup McLarens. Yeah, yeah. But but he like was in Top so Gear, pissed. you know, the punishment car is like a base McLaren. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> bro, I cannot be seen. It's a five five seventy yeah. s, bro. Bro, I cannot be seen in so, 570. So then, yes. So then, a, the next year we did it. He he takes a a Lamborghini and he mm-hmm. strips it down to the chassis in the engine, and then builds another fiberglass Batmobile based off the video game. He took the specs from the video game and oh. sent it to a company, and they built it. And that one worked, and that one got like a ton of press. I mean, it oh, was and, all but over it, the place. it was it was based on like a Huracan or something. It, no, it was just, it was like an old, he was like, he was like, oh yeah, I took a, a, a Lamborghini and I stripped it down to the chassis and I was like, dang, like that, like you just took a <laughs> brand new Lamborghini and stripped it down. And he's like, oh, they're cheap in my country. And I'm like, how cheap? He's like, you know, you can pick them up for like 250, 300,000. <laughs> and I'm like. Economies of I'm scale, like, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's like a different world, right? Yeah. I mean, Although our homie is in do. Dubai and and he regularly sends me, there's a website over there called Dubizzle, and just by the name you can tell what year it was launched, but it's called Dubizzle, and uh, it's like somewhere between Craigslist and eBay in Dubai, and he sends me links for, you know, for them they don't have a lot of like. Um, sense of like the thing I wanted when I was growing up. It's either some crazy concourse thing or it's the newest, fastest, flashiest, most expensive. And so the kind of stuff that retains value, the so-called secondhand enthusiast cars here, like the Ferrari 430s and 575s, that shit is worthless in the Middle East. Nobody wants it. And so you can get, you know, a Ferrari 360 or something over there, paddle shift for I mean, literally like forty thousand dollars for for like yeah. for like nothing. Audi R eights are like they're just fucking <laughs> cranking through them things, and it, you know, like it's accurate. a pain. In, yeah, because once it's not the newest shit anymore, like no one cares. It's just not they can't yeah. sell it. So and they 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 treat the cars really badly over there, and it's really hot. The paint's all <laughs> faded. So, like, you can buy this shit, but it's a it's a pain in the ass to, to send it back here. But the guy's not wrong. His, the, whatever he's buying in, in the Middle East is probably 40% off whatever it costs here, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, I mean, and it's just the mindset, right? It's like that's what you do when you have more money than you know what to do. It oh, is yeah. Go build a Batmobile out of but a like, Lamborghini. I mean, you know, why wouldn't you? There's, there's – there's far less interesting things that that person could have done. You know what I yeah. mean? That there's no, any I, number I, of off me? the rack seven figure cars that that you know you pick a color and a leather and and you write a check for two million dollars and three years later it shows up. This you know? R8 is forty four thousand dollars. Fuck yeah, dude! Look at that twenty. <laughs> it's a fourteen. It's not even like an 09. A fourteen in a good color. Forty four grand. <laughs> I'm telling oh, you. Oh, but look, you can God. look at the fucking bolsters. I can uh, smell that, that car through the screen. Yeah. That car yeah. smells like cigarettes and cocoa butter. It's fucked. <laughs> oh, it's a stick, though. It's a stick? Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah. all right. A stick sh- oh, no, go. it's not. No, it's not. It's no. Never mind. Sorry, my oh. bad. But it's <laughs> And that floor mat says, I give no fucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> aftermarket. 44,000. But I wasn't fucking around. 44 grand. No, for <laughs> I, it, it's, it's, a different, it's a different mindset for sure. Uh, do Bizzle. Is, you know, key, the, if you ever find yourself bored, go to Do Bizzle. Keyword, gold. 
Just trust me on that. The key word is gold. <laughs> what <laughs> do you mean? Come, like you know, cars that are fully wrapped or plated oh, in gold, yes. like crazy yes. no, gold you're, you're, trim. You're, 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 oh, all kind of yeah. shit. You're 100 percent um, right. We we were in Dubai, uh, 2018. Uh, went to Abu Dhabi for the F1 races, and then went to Dubai right after that, and just like toured around. And I mean, what like what an incredible city, right? It's, it's an interesting like, place, it right? Was, oh, it was like it was a desert, and now it's like the most advanced city in the world yeah it was like uh they were they just took a someone just showed up in the desert with a postcard of miami and just said bro bro you you build this but 30 percent bigger right here right here and then they someone else had a picture a postcard of the vegas strip habibi habibi right here bellagio and the reading else but big big <laughs> just build that shit. <laughs> it's crazy it's so god it's so beautiful um, you, before MythBusters, were, you were at ILM. Were you at Industrial Light and Magic? Did I read that right? Yeah. Tell so me I about was, that uh, because when I was a kid, that was like the dream job, like miniatures and too. practical effects. That's the shit. That was the dream job for me as a kid. Like, yeah, you know, when I saw, let's see, in '77 is when I saw the first Star Wars came out, and uh, right after that, there was a like a book that was published. It was the art of star Wars. Uh huh. And, you know, and they showed all the models and all the conceptual drawings of, you know, the different versions of Darth Vader. And, and I was just like, okay, that's, yeah, now I know, I know what I want to do in life. It's, I want to be a special effects guy. I want to work on models. I want to build, I want to do star Wars. That's what I thought in my head. Right. I mean, but that's so and cool then, that like, it's like, listen, I'm going to do pro level arts and crafts. Yeah. Basic, you know what I mean? Like, oh, right. but it, you know what I mean? Right. It's like, it, it's, it's such an achievable thing. It's not like yeah. I need some crazy level education. It's like, I need to get really good at fucking arts and crafts and then be yeah. in the right place. Kind of. Yeah. Right. And everyone, everybody used to ask me like, Oh, did you build models when you were a kid? Like, did you get the kits? And, and I was like, no, like I used to try, like I would get, I remember I had like a, um, uh, it was like a a van model and I tried to start, you know, I started putting it together and I just got so bored that I just started gluing parts together and built my own like little sculpture. Mm -hmm. And when I got to ILM, that's exactly what I ended up doing. I mean, it was like you would get the artwork from the art department. The art director would come in and give you a 2D drawing or, you know, a rendition of what the spaceship was going to look like or whatever we were building. And they're like, okay, make it in three dimension. And so it was just complete fabrication, like from scratch. So that's, it was. I mean, that's fun. That's, that's an awesome, awesome gig. And you you weren't yeah. a, uh, were you a trained engineer? I didn't see that you were. Or was it just you learned how to do stuff by doing it when you were younger? I, I was just building stuff as a kid. Like, you know, my dad was very arts and crafts. I mean, he was an artist, sculptor. And so we had a whole shop in our garage. And I was using the bandsaw, like my dad would let me use the bandsaw um, before I could even reach the actual table. <laughs> so he would he would have me on a little step ladder, and I would be up there with my little fingers right close nice. to the blade. You know, my mom was in the other room praying that I didn't cut my fingers off. Everyone's um, got a thing their dad would let them do at an inappropriately young age. Bandsaw yeah. is really up there with most dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> but totally. But my dad, my dad was insane. Like my dad was a bigger kid than us. Like when when Fourth of July would come, like he was the one setting off the illegal fireworks, and we were just kind of, you know, I was just like, "Wow, this is awesome!" Like he's not getting mad at us; he's actually encouraging us to go play with fireworks. So then, when did when did you first start seeing something that you made like on the screen and go, "Holy shit, that's that's the, the that's really first, what happens." The first movie was Starship Trooper, which is probably my favorite movie I ever worked on. I don't know if you saw that. Paul I've seen it. I saw it. I saw it a long time ago. I I, I, I yeah. saw it a few times when it was new. It was a big hit movie. Yeah. Now it's kind of a cult it's, movie, right? Oh, it's kind of totally, a cult classic. Yeah. Denise my university Richards, had it, it was, in his was, class. They were like, "This what? is a perfect." Yeah. My my university, whatever class was, was like, "This is a perfect um, execution of like." 
a patriotic army movie, hmm. but it's just set yeah. in an alien landscape. But they're oh. like, it has all the tropes. It, it is like a skeleton oh, of really? insert an army movie now. And it, so that's why we wanted to study it. Just oh, because interesting. it's like, hoorah, and we're going to go get them, and <laughs> alien, yeah. and, and tattoos, and all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're 100% right. Like the propaganda films that they were putting out there. You know, see the universe. Day and... Go kill bugs. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But so, so we, uh, so we were building ships. The the Roger Youngs, which that was the name of the ship that the uh, the Space Marines were flying. And so we built these giant ships. And I remember going to the premiere Isn't that them right there? and the big guys, right? uh, w- watching it on the big screen. And it it took a second for me to. Like it, it ruined it ruined it for me for a second because it was like, <laughs> oh my god, that's the ship I built. That's a miniature. Like, that's not real. And it, it, it took it, you, it yeah, really, it took yourself it, out it, of the plot. Yes, I actually thought you were going to say it, the other way. I thought you were going to say that you stayed in the plot in and and went right over the thing that you built, but actually it went the other way. It ruined it for you. Oh, like, totally. hey, that's fake. Like, that's what, yeah, you guys, that thing's only like three feet tall. Like, that's, that's like an onion article. Hey, no that thing's fake, says guy who built miniature. Right. <laughs> In fear. Humans can't fit on the spaceship I built, says guy who built miniature. <laughs> that's that was... not real, says James Cameron. Yeah. <laughs> that's so cool, though. A big and, and And for your first big thing to be a big spaceship that's an awful lot like a Star Wars you know, battle cruiser or whatever. It's like totally yeah. a similar vibe, you know? Yeah, completely. And then, and it was funny because we were wrapping up that movie, you know, all the effects for that movie. And then there were little whispers going around the shop that Star Wars was coming, right? Episode one, uh, George Lucas had just announced that he was going to redo, you know, do the prequels to Star Wars. And you could imagine the, like, Oh my God! The nerds must be losing their shit. Oh, dude, seriously, like you know, because it was this weird <laughs> game where you would try to like you know not suck up, but you know, be really nice to the whoever was in charge, whoever was the boss who was going to be the model supervisor on the next show. Yeah. You're like, hey, I'm almost done on this show. Like, use me. You know, I'm available. Yeah. I'll be available next week. But with Star Wars, people were losing their shit because it was just like, this is why we all got into this industry. It's oh, for shit, Star yeah. Wars, the movie. <laughs> and uh, and so people, you know, it was like, it was crazy because like models would roll in. There was, I remember seeing a sculpture of an alien and it was like this cool new alien that they had just, you know, come up with. And the sculptor had sculpted a bust, you know, it was like a... Uh, the head of the alien and we were all like oh my god this is the new alien and then the movie comes out and it's Jar Jar Binks and he opens his mouth and it just was like oh. what? What? <laughs> <laughs> like, what happened everyone started to back oh away. no what, what if you mean? sculpt something that turns into like a hateable character that's, uh, that's no wow. shit <laughs> Dude, it was like we're all kind of looking at each other in the audience you know in the theater going why is he talking like that? <laughs> I could just imagine the ILM office, though. It's like George Lucas announces a Star Wars, and then it's like someone smashes a red button, and it sets off all the fucking <laughs> sirens, and everyone's like <laughs> losing their fucking minds. Like papers yeah. are just flying People everywhere. Are coming like, down poles like firemen. <laughs> it's like the naked gun. <laughs> This is what you're trained for. Code red, code red. Go, go, go. Gold leaders standing by. Gold leaders. Hot glue gun magazine. Hot glue gun magazine. That's awesome. There was a, there was a, there was a memo that went out while we were working at ILM. Uh, they, you know, granted, you you have a company full of nerds and geeks because we all wanted to work on Star Wars. Um, so there was a memo that went out. If you see George Lucas in the hallway or the coffee room or whatever, don't approach him, don't talk to him, just ignore him, right? Because you can imagine yeah. everywhere he goes, you know, the geeks are like, okay, so what can you tell me what happened? Why are you <laughs> you, know, you know, they were just like, they, he was God, right? He was the yeah. God of nerd. And like so, Katy Perry has the same rule, but for a completely different reason. <laughs> yeah, for, for different. <laughs> yeah. If she's at a rodeo, they're like, "Don't approach her." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and 
so there was this moment where George Lucas came out onto the set and we had this uh, spaceship that I had, you know, spent a lot of time working on. So when it went out to stage to film, light it and film it, I, you know, they would send a model maker out just to babysit it, make sure it looks good and is working properly. And so I'm out there and every day the producers and the art director would come out and show us what we were doing and how to fix, you know, change this, do that. And George Lucas was with them this one time. And now I'm, I'm like freaking out because again, he's my, he's my hero. And, uh, and so he comes up to the model and he looks at me and he's all, does this part light up? And I just sit there. And they're all looking at me, and I'm like, when and the spoken producers to, looking Tori, at me, like, to. <laughs> yeah, they're like, uh, you can talk to Mr. Lucas, and I'm like, I'm so sorry. They told me I'd get fired if I talked to him. <laughs> yeah, just like that, and then I just started talking. But it was like seriously a moment of, I was told I'm not supposed to oh, talk yeah. to this guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I can imagine that level of that level of fear. Like, yeah. I need to answer this question from the guy. But someone's gonna come tap yeah. me on the shoulder in thirty seconds and yeah, go, yeah. "You're fucking shit." Or, or like, yeah. or like somebody, somebody higher up the chain. Like, you tell him if it lights up. Why, yeah. I, I'm not, I can't talk to this guy. Hand signals, like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> me? Um, what is the? What's like the biggest? Did you ever do? Did you do full size stuff too, or is it always just miniatures? We did. Yeah, when we did. Um, Matrix two and three, we did. We we called them uh, giant miniature, giant miniatures. So it was like half scale, quarter scale kind of thing. Yeah, like we did uh, in Matrix two, we did the city of Zion, and we built oh, yeah. like the gates of Zion and the the control tower, and you know those things. We were in a sound stage, you know, a hangar out of an old navy base. So it was like you know a, a 50 foot tall set that we, you know, that we were calling a miniature. Um, <laughs> yeah. How tall was it? It was know. a 50 foot tall set playing a hundred foot tall set. Is that pretty much what? No, but play, playing like probably, you know, like a 200 foot wall. Oh, okay, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Something, something, so like quarter scale, something ridiculous. But it was, uh, you know, that was, that was probably one of my other favorite movies that I worked on were Matrix 2 and 3 we built so many insane models and destroyed them all. Like basically it was like, we were building models, loading them with explosives, sending them down a wire to crash into something and then blowing them up. I mean, it was just every day was like hey, another, that sounds like it was, a nice, awesome. nice thing to be doing at work. Really? I mean, blowing something up yeah. every day. Is, yeah. Sounds fun. Very cathartic. Yeah. I bet. Yeah. Yeah. Are, is, there, people, are, people is there go, any innovations in, ex, in the explosion technology uh, recently? <laughs> Mm, that's a good question. I mean, yeah, there are, you know, there's, there's, we, we, we're constantly blowing, we're constantly coming up with ways to blow stuff up in new ways. Um, on, uh, on motor MythBusters, what are, not that we need to give away the entire plot of the, uh, of the series or every episode, but what are some of, what are some of the biggest, uh, myths that you guys address? I can we see did. a literal Flintstones prop car. Yes. <laughs> we that was that was one that a lot of people were not excited about me i was like giddy because i loved flintstones growing up and uh actually when i was a kid maybe around four or five my parents took me on a trip to see the grand canyon and on the way to the grand canyon there's this creepy weird flintstones themed park out in the middle of the desert like Flintstones awesome. or dinosaurs? No, Flintstones. Oh, really? Yeah, it's like if you look it up, I think it's for sale now. But I mean, it's completely <laughs> really? abandoned. There's a Flintstones park for sale apart. in the desert. All right, it's like Flintstones, but big. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it, it I think it's in. I think it's in Arizona. And so we went out there, and my parents just kind of let us loose. They were like, "Go!" And this place was empty. That's what was so creepy about it. It was like this supposed theme park, but nobody was there. So it was me and my sister running around by herself. And it was almost like an abandoned, you know, creepy village. But there was somebody, that, you know, this park had built a full scale Flintstones car, but it was just a prop, it wouldn't roll. 
So when they told me that we're going to be building, we're going to be testing the Flintstone car, I instantly, like my little kid, you know, I went back to when I was a little kid. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is, this is kind of like the greatest moment. Like I get to see if I can actually build a Flintstone car. Everybody else was like, this is lame. This is stupid. It'll never work. It'll be too heavy. Uh, but I'll tell you what, by the end of it, everybody was like, like everyone was so happy to see it come together. They, they, they all, you know, so, it softened their hearts, their bitter hearts. Yeah, this seems super cool. What, I mean, like, it's, really so you, cool it looks like the rollers are made of like actual poured concrete discs, maybe. Yeah, yeah. And we took uh, <laughs> those those you know big like base. It, they're molds. You know, it's like the, the big tubes, sauna tubes that you fill up with concrete. That's what we did. And so how much does this thing weigh? Because it's like two giant tree trunks carved and then uh, a bunch of stone slabs and concrete. Yeah. So the, just to give you an idea, each wheel weighed about 1,600 pounds. So it's, wow. it's well over a ton. And it has no uh, prop electric motor or anything, right? It's it's foot powered? No. Awesome. Totally, foot, totally idiot powered right there. You see right there. And I take it there's no way to steer it whatsoever. Um, there is not. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Cool. It's true to the cartoon. So, right? just wondering, what yeah. is the the myth <laughs> that, that it's possible to push one of these so, with your feet at all? The myth is: could, can if you had a Flintstone car, could you theoretically start it and stop it with nothing but human power? So that's that's what we set I'm out. Gonna go with a, I'm going to go with a hell to the no, Bob. Well, I know. I, think, <laughs> I, mean, I, bet, I bet if you get up and push it, it depends on the rolling resistance. But the whole like sitting down and just pulling it with your hamstrings. With just your – yeah, just tightening tough. your yeah. hamstrings and calves. Yeah, yeah. right. But this is, is, is so my, cool. Is my face giving it away in that photo? <laughs> the, picture is, the picture is a bit of a giveaway. <laughs> Although, frankly, it looks like Busy and Faye are faking it. Um. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But look at that burnout. See that little donut skid on the ground? Uh-huh. <laughs> that was from a different car. <laughs> different car. All right, so the Flintstones one, that seems fun. What else? What other kind of stuff you got going on there? Uh, the other one, we, God, we did so many. One, which is another one that was, it was fun, but it was disgusting, is that the cooling uh, an engine you're using urine. Wow. Um, wow. Just because, like, Bear <laughs> Grylls style, that that's what you got? I've never heard that. Exactly. Yeah, so we, we found that this guy online apparently was like broke down in the middle of the desert. He, his radiator broke and it was leaking fluid. And so the only fluid he had to top it off was urine. So he filled it up with pee and apparently he claimed that he was able to drive. Uh, so we went out to test that. And it was, if you ever, no. like urine smells bad. Month Hot. old urine no. is even oh, worse. Oh God! Oh yeah. Because we we had to collect it, right? We had uh, in the bathroom. We had. Uh, well, isn't part of the <laughs> myth like <laughs> have to be like what you can pee out? I mean, the guy was on the side of the desert. He wasn't collecting pee. He only had what was See, in his bladder. Good, good point. See, How much you're did smart. He have? You're, I think you guys thinking. took it too and far. So, <laughs> well, no. So listen, this is this is what we this is the scenario we came up with, and, and BC and I both we drank. At the beginning of the morning, we drank um, almost a gallon of water each, and then we tried to see how long we could hold it for, and then we ch wanted to see how much a uh, human, you know, an average person holding pee, how much pee they would do. And I think we ended up getting a little over a quart okay. each. Each. And so we were like, well, what if what if there were three people in this vehicle? And they all oh, yeah, because you test the myth and then you optimize, right? So what about the ideal yeah. scenario? Right, right. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so, the, so, and like, so that's the month of pee. Ew. <laughs> the month of pee. So in the bathroom, in the, in the bathroom, we had jars. And so instead of peeing into the urinal, we pee into the jar and then put it in a plastic bag. It was very, you know, tight. It was very... Uh, because, I mean, it's kind of gross, right? It's super gross. Yes, it yes, it's very gross. I'm with you on the and gross so as So now they just let it sit in the bathroom. We had this shelf with all these jars of pee in bags. And then it was somebody's job to, like, pour it into a gallon, you know, gallon bucket so that we could take it out to set. But, oh, 
God, <laughs> I mean, the smell, and it was disgusting. Like some of these people, like some some people on our crew, they need to go to the doctor and get that <laughs> shit checked out because uh, like there was some cloudy pee and there was like some oh, stuff no. in their pee that it was just like, <laughs> I, some people like, were not hydrated have some enough. Disease, bro. Were they labeled by name? Jesus Christ, out. man! You guys are insured. I yeah. hope they were labeled yeah. by name. You don't want to share. It's not just one jar. Oh man! And then you had to put it no, into a, a, into an engine, Ugh. a hot engine. <laughs> so imagine month old pee and then steaming pee. It, like even though we were wearing you know, our masks, we had those oh. like heavy duty respirators. The, the stench still got through there. It was this, Dude, like, that's... as soon as you poured it in, it started steaming, and there was a couple moments where we almost threw up. Oh, that's so gross. That's yeah. so this, gross. This poor track. And you then if it overheats people. again, it just... And then you burn the truck. Ugh. You just light it on fire. Yeah, get the explosives out. The whole truck on Just fire. light it. Just to take a torch to it. Get a flint did, So, but did, in the myth, do you have to fix the leak also, or did... You know, was it like a race against time where you're like, okay, he peed a gallon and now he's got to drive half a mile before it, the truck explodes? It was more like that. It was more like a, a race. So it's like, okay. okay, you're in an emergency situation. And this is going to be helpful to people. You know, if, if if somebody is broke down, you know, if they break down on the side of the road because of a overheated engine, you know, this is going to be one of those episodes where people are going to go, you, you saved my life. Because you know what you taught me on in that episode. I just had I hate to say that you, you you spoiler alert, but apparently I guess you can you can run the car on P if you if it cool oh, no, it if you no. have to. Oh no, no. So there was there was two aspects of the myth. It was can you like use urine to top off your radiator, but then there was what if you filled the entire thing with urine. Now, I'm oh, not going to tell you what happened. God. But, but, yeah. Wow. But so, so, yeah, so it was, it was disgusting. <laughs> yeah, it looks yeah. like no one can go back to Willow Springs ever again. Yeah. Yeah, thank <laughs> yeah. you. I mean, the good news is at Willow Springs, you'd never know. It just dries you just out ne- immediately. You never know. It just I, vanishes I into Some, the... It smells like urine in, in the um, parts of the track. That's a tough place to film, Willow Springs. The wind, ugh, it's the hell on audio. Worst. True. Yeah. But you know what? I was watching uh, Ford versus Ferrari, uh-huh. and then that that opening race in the movie yeah. there at Willow Springs, and yeah, I was like, like, I was, I was like, so I was like, I was just there. Oh, yeah, man. location spotting in Ford versus Ferrari is really fun because they made the movie on a much smaller budget than you think, so they had to replicate a lot of uh, European locations in America, yeah. and so they assembled a really interesting collection of corners that were probably inspired by the corners at Le Mans to actually play the corners at Le Mans. So they as they wow. used three or four different racetracks around the country, um, mostly mostly Road Atlanta, but they used three or four tracks around the country to assemble a very Le Mans-like uh, uh, looking track. But they used Willow Springs um, for that opening scene, and I thought it was hilarious that they had to decorate the set fucking zero. It look, they didn't change anything. <laughs> Got to make it look old, guys. They just parked All old right. cars there, and it's like, oh, well, yeah. here we go. Period yeah. piece. That's lunch. <laughs> they literally has not changed in, a, in yeah. fifty years. And then they used yeah. uh, they used the Hyundai Proving Grounds at the very end to replicate Riverside, which is no longer there. Oh. Yeah, the yeah. Uh, but That's location cool. but, spotting I mean, is fun. And and that movie, like you know, a lot of it shot at night anyway. So it's, mm-hmm. I mean, it's that's a good way to hide. Yeah, and you know, and and Superformance provided all the cars, and a, a couple folks bought some of the prop cars and started like driving them around LA. So it's kind of interesting to see them oh, in like car shows and so stuff. Cool. They got one of them got me. I was like, oh shit, Lamar car in the house. Oh, oh, never mind. That's uh, fucking four. <laughs> <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> Why does it sound like a, a Subaru? <laughs> <laughs> Um, do you, uh, what do you, what do you drive? Do you, or do you have any fun cars or have you had fun cars? I, in your so life? I have a 70, uh, 73 Camaro. Oh, split cool. Bumper. Yeah. Um, uh, which I got actually from the original series. We were testing, can you run a car on ethanol or moonshine? Oh yeah. And I remember that. So, one. so we took an old car, you know, the seventies car, the Camaro, which had a carburetor. And then we took a modern day Camaro um, and made like, it was like 98 proof 
ethanol that you know that we have this uh okay you see that photo right there see how it's not split bumper anymore yeah or split split fender somebody stole my split fenders and put that on there what is that crazy yeah Wait, they it was stole dark. yours and then they left another bumper is that the weirdest thing <laughs> that, you've ever heard? That's, he won't even who, notice. Like, who does that? I've what never a nice heard thief. Like that. <laughs> that is really funny. I had it. I had Maybe it, it was like Chip Foose lot. or is something. You, is Chris Jacobs around? Like, what the fuck? Is that crazy? Because I was like, I was, so I, I bought I bought the car from the show. Uh, when the show ended, they're like, we're getting rid of the, you know, the props. I'm like, what are you guys going to do with the Camaro? And they're like, we're getting rid of it. I'm, uh, I'll take it. So I bought it and it wasn't running. So I sent it down to, uh, there's a shop in South San Francisco and they got it running again. And they're like, you can just keep it parked here until you're ready. You know, they, they had a big parking lot in front of the shop and, and it was like in a gated parking area, right? They're like you can just leave it here until you're ready to, to get it out of here. And then I got called to do that show, which was um, sticker shock. And it, it was on uh, Velocity Channel, I think, was at the time. And it was basically you bring your car on and you go how much you think the car is worth. And then the they assess it and they appraise it. And they're like, it's actually worth this much. And you go, yeah. oh, my God, it's worth way more. It's like uh, so, Antiques Roadshow for cars. E exactly, <clears throat> for cars. And so it's sitting in the, you know, the showroom. And, and I'm like, yeah, it's a you know, a 73 Camaro split fender. And I looked at it and I was like, wait, it's, I was like, why is there a solid fender? And then I had to go back into my old photos and I have evidence of it when it was a split that. fender. And I, and while it was in that parking lot, somebody came in, pulled out the split fenders and put on that piece of crap. I mean, is that the craziest so thing? Funny. I mean, it's unbelievable. I, it's, I mean, my mind says it's an inside job at the shop. That's that's right. what my mind yeah. says. So, someone well, had a friend I don't know, who had I don't a know if it was an inside job. I think, you know, it's like if this is a shop and people are coming in and out of this shop, somebody saw it. And oh, went, it's an, an adjacent job. Yeah, adjacent. Yeah, yeah. Adjacent to job. No, it wasn't, yeah. in, it wasn't in their shop. Because I called my buddy. I'm like, dude, my fenders are gone. There's like, it's like a, the split fenders. And he saw and they replaced it. I'm like, yeah. It's like, <laughs> What a what a thoughtful thief! <laughs> That's so crazy. <laughs> That's that. amazing. I've not heard of that before. But could you run it on ethanol? Was a... uh, no, yeah. we could not. We, we it, it just choked out. But but the uh, the modern Camaro did. It actually. does. Yeah, eighty five yeah. flex yeah. fuel oh. flex fuel vehicle. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it's like race fuel. Yeah. Well, that's also uh, you know Back to the Future three. You know the fucking injection manifold blows out the back of the car. They try to run it on moonshine doesn't go well for the dog oh, right yeah right i have a book wow. like you with star wars i was a back to the future nerd so I'm, I'm like a few years after you i think and uh and i have a book i have a bunch of nerdy ass back to the future books but one of them is about the 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 development process of the delorean and all the future parts and all the time travel parts and all that stuff and and how they made it and and i i just i thought it was the most interesting thing ever how they just went to whatever that um Apex Electrics or whatever that place is and just found yeah. a whole bunch of crazy shit. You know, it's got to look yeah. it's got to look like it works, but it's got to look homemade. It can't can't look too professional. I mean, it's really interesting repurposing of stuff, you know. Yeah. God, that those that series of movies is just genius. Back to the Future so, uh, is, you know, like Zach was talking about uh, Starship Troopers. Like, I, I I went to art school and in the film class I took, they were talking about how Back to the Future is like the perfect screenplay. It has like yeah. every every element of, of good screenwriting in there. Um, yeah, it's so good that you forget that it's fundamentally about incest. Um. <laughs> yeah, right, right. He kisses right. his mother. Yeah, That's it's going. Yeah. It's get. It gets weird in the fifties. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, <laughs> no judgment here. No, no, do no. You, but like, do what you got to do. Such a good movie that she, that it doesn't matter. It's mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, everyone's like, hey, hey, it's okay. We, Time machine. We just let that let that one slide. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, are you not? Are you still? Are you still getting to do movie prop stuff uh, these days, or is, is your time consumed with busting myths? Not anymore. I mean, you know, once MythBusters kind of took off the original series, um, there was times when, when we would have breaks in between seasons that you know I could 
sneak away and work on stuff. But the schedule got so busy that it was just, it was impossible to do. And now it's like, you know, I stay busy with doing the shows uh, that it's just, I mean, sometimes I miss it. Like I miss just sitting there and building a cool model or whatever, you know, building kind of sets or whatever. But, uh, you know, TV pays way better than modeling. Yeah, I bet. When you do like what, you know, in, in, in a, I'm, I'm in the original Mythbusters, and I imagine in, in this one, you know, the the bits are set up to fit in the half hour or, or sixty minute uh, block, you know, as it, as it were. And but you know, like like a like a pimp my ride or an overhaul, and you know, I imagine that is is edited for convenience and not uh, reality. You know, some of those uh, some of those myths that 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 you guys set up involve building some pretty large and or complicated contraptions and getting locations and stuff like that. So like how long would you guys spend on some of those individual That's, science you, experiments? You bring up, a, you bring up a, a, a really good point in a, it is frustrating because it's not something where we could just knock out in a day, you know, like we did, we did one myth that was um, that the old hot rodders, figured out that if you chop your vehicle by lowering the roof, you lower the profile, make it more aerodynamic, less, you know, drag, um, that they would get them to go faster that way. Right. And I thought that was pretty interesting because, you know, you see these, these old hot rods that were chopped and it was like, was that just like a aesthetic thing or, you know, they look, it looks super cool. But the whole point was to make them go faster, to make them more aerodynamic, right? And so we set out to test that. So we took an old 70s van, took it out to the runway, just slammed on the brake or the gas as fast as we can go, just you know, for a quarter mile. It's like uh, an 18 how... second quarter mile, probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> totally. And we, and we wanted to see what the max speed was of that van. Then we brought it back to the shop and we were going to chop it, take it back out to the runway and run the test again and see if we got it to go any faster. But we had to do the chopping ourselves. And so that process took forever. I mean, yeah. I, in my mind, I'm thinking like, let's just like chop it, drop it, screw it together, hit it with some Bondo and we're done. Yeah. But we really wanted to kind of, um, look at the artistry and the craftsmanship of doing it. So we did it the legit way. We had a, a team of uh, fabricators who actually have done chops, you know, have done chops before. Uh, and they kind of were with us the whole way, but we, BC and I had to do a lot of the work ourselves. Um, and it was awesome because now I know how to chop a car, but. What was the, the hardest part of that? The windshield? The windshield was tough. Uh, the hardest part was just the amount of welding and filling. You know, it was like, it was just so time consuming. You just kind of put on your welding helmet and just go into a zone and it was just like, you know, cut, put together, weld, fill. I mean, it, it's just, it's like a mind numbing process because there's so much like just, you know, work that you have to do and it's just, you know, repetitive, repetitive. Um, but from the time that we did that first run, it was probably toward like in the beginning of the season when, when we filmed. So like maybe two months or three months later, yeah. we tested it at the end. So it was like it from, from the beginning of that episode to the end of that episode, about two months elapsed in, you know, in between. Yeah. That's a, that's a wow. long, that's a long turnaround. Well, you have to do yeah. all the work in between too. Yeah. It's not like, yeah. you know, you're farming all of it out to to a third party yeah. shop. If you're physically doing it, that seems seems involved. But 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 we also had a, I mean we had a team of amazing builders. So it was like this was kind of one of those projects where it was like around the clock. So it was like if we were filming on location, they would be on the van trying to get it finished, and then we'd get back to the shop, and they're like, okay, we need shots of you doing the work and so we were yeah it was crazy <laughs> yeah I, I mean i can imagine but that's that's what i hear from you know anyone who's ever been on a, any kind of a build show it's always just uh you know it's the the timelines of how it looks on tv versus how it is in in reality are always substantially different 
Yeah. Well, like those makeover shows, a lot of those home oh, yeah. renovation shows from working with producers who would have done those shows. They're like, a lot of these times these hosts don't even do the work. They're like, okay, I'm going to hammer this and paint this. And, and then they leave and then the builders come in and do the work. And I'm not with us, us, we like, there was a lot of times where we don't even know how to build, you know, it's like, I don't even know how the heck I would build this. So, you know, it, it's, it's a, process of getting in there getting your hands dirty and figuring it out well i'm sure some some content comes from there's some good moments when you guys are trying to figure something out and it's genuine you're like oh we're gonna have a problem if we do this because you're trying to figure out the system like the pull tab thing so if, if you had someone else do that and you just walked in and like oh, okay it all works like you lose a little bit of um i think the richness of the experience mm -hmm. yeah a absolutely i mean that was kind of why our show um i think was so successful and hopefully this will you know resonate as well is because we are kind of like the audience we, we the audience sees us and they're going through the process at, right. at the same time we are um you know where, where you think something's going to work and then you go do it and it completely well, you have to prove that it works. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of build shows, you know, whether it's a hot rod or a, a, a project car or an apartment or house flip, it's like, it, like my my friend Carl used to say, and he was a, he was a TV chef, and he'd say, "I love cooking on TV because if I tell you it tastes good, you have no choice but to believe me." <laughs> <laughs> and, he, right. and he was a, he was a genius, and yeah. he was right, yeah. you know. And, but but on MythBusters, you actually have to demonstrate that the thing works, uh, or or maybe it doesn't, you know. Yeah, yeah, and it's pretty obvious whether it works or not. I mean, <laughs> sometimes it's painfully obvious. Yeah. You know, there, there, yeah. there were times, but I mean, that's, and I think that's the, the charm of the show is it doesn't have to be, you know, if, if it doesn't work, that's busted. You know what I mean? It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's not like we're, we're trying to make these things work every time. It's like either it works or it doesn't. And well, that's another actually back end genius of the show is it's like, if it doesn't work, it's not necessarily cause like you couldn't do it. And like, you know yeah. what I mean? It's like, you're determining whether <laughs> It's like the same. Yeah, if you say it can't be done, what fucking choice do I have but to believe you? <laughs> but we used to get hammered on like the chat boards or online where we would say it didn't work, and then people would just oh boy. be like frothing at the mouth. They're like, "The reason it didn't work is because you're an idiot." Oh my god! You, Talk about comment section you don't want to wade into oh, yeah. the MythBusters oh. comment section. Oh my god! Oh you my think god. mine are bad? Holy shit! Mythbusters but comment section. Of the fuck out of here. No, yeah, thank you. A lot of Monday morning quarterbacks. Oh, but what was God. nice, though, is it forced us to look at what we had done and to see if these suggestions were valid. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they were. And we were like, okay, we did get it wrong. And we're admitting it. And thank you for pointing it out. It could have been nicer about it, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to get it done. It's and, not. It's uh, never because they're pointing out that you miss something or don't know something. It's always in the attitude of the point out. <laughs> well, I, I think yeah, yeah, I think it's like you're like I can I could do the job better than you or something. I don't know what it is, but luckily for us, we have you know it gives us the opportunity to go back and retest it. Yeah. And you know sometimes we're like, all right, you know, you were right, we were wrong. Thanks. You just gave us another show. I just pocketed another yeah, day rate. Yeah, exactly. Ah. That's it. That's ah. what I'm talking about. If you can rebust it, it takes six months. Ooh, six months of day rates. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Give me more fuck ups. <laughs> I'll retest exactly. everything. <laughs> I'll keep. I'll keep messing up. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, did, Zach, did we have any uh, specific uh, Tory questions from the people? Uh, a lot of compliments. A lot of uh, reminder that yeah, Busy does uh, Tech Tuesday on his Instagram Live, answering crazy engineering questions. Um, uh, Weirenfelt wants to know if uh, uh, Motor Mythbusters has an in-house racing driver or needs one. Um, you know, BC is kind of like you know. I would say out of between he and I, he has more racing experience, but I also like to race, so. Um, I think we're covered, but if one of us crashes and dies, mm. well, you know, we'll, we'll let you know. There'll, there'll be an opening. 
<laughs> well, you, you like to do voiceover. a lot of the stunts and the driving and all that stuff, right? Like you're the are oh, you the yeah. daredevil of the group, or is that you? Totally, and, he... and it was so funny. Because... He got so happy when he said it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, no, but it was just it was funny because like for you know twelve years, I did this show on the original series, and you just kind of get used to doing crazy stuff where a normal person would walk in and you're like, wait a minute, you're you're gonna drive that car on two wheels until it rolls like that you're trying to get that to happen and it's like yeah that's what we're doing and so now you have bc and faye coming in and they're all about making the cars work properly and making them you know look good and and doing everything your the proper way and then i come in and i'm like well let's just rip that off and do this and we'll just weld this here and then i'll drive it and we'll see if it blows up or not and they're just kind of like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like Movie you're prop guy insane. in the house. <laughs> <laughs> and there was there was a there was a scene we did one. It was from the movie Strange Brew. Do you remember Strange Brew? Oh yeah. The yeah, take off, eh? Yeah. The beer drinking the Canadians. Um, and in the movie, we test we're testing one of the myths from the movie. Uh, the bad guy cuts their brakes, and he cuts the brakes so that they can make two stops, two full stops, but then their third stop, the brakes will fail and then they'll crash and die. So we took a van, uh, tampered with the brakes, and I took BC for a ride. And he, like, his eyes were like saucers. Like, he was so freaked out by my driving. And he was like, you're nuts. I don't know, like... Well, in I fairness, you had no brakes. I mean, if, if if you're driving in a manner when there's already no brakes, you know, I can yeah. understand his fear. Yeah. <laughs> I've lost brakes in a car. I've, I've blown a brake line. Remember the Toyota Previa? Mm -hmm. I've blown a brake line going down a very large mountain in a very old oh. shitty car. And we were able to downshift our way down uh, to safety. <sighs> Um, but, but that was the That's end. Terrifying. Was, yeah, no, it, it was, it was, there was nothing left. There was, I mean, it was fucked. So like, I, I, I understand busy's oh fear that, that situation. That's scary. No, yeah, we yeah. were in a, in a controlled environment and you know, it was like there, some things could have, like, there was a situation we had like a, a device that would stop us from crashing into a building. Um, but that device, you know, it, that could have actually it's called a bumper. <laughs> Was it like hay it, bales? Yeah. Or like... <laughs> no, we we took uh, fifty gallon or eighty gallon drums oh, yeah. and you know, plastic barrels and filled them with water, and that was oh. our our, our uh, stopping. That's another good myth, you know, like mechanism. from Speed, like from the movie uh, where they crashed yeah. the Jaguar XJS mm -hmm. into that. Yeah, hopefully we get a season two. I got so oh my god, I got so many myth for season two do you remember uh lone wolf mcquade with um chuck norris no i was never a chuck norris fan i think we i think you missed oh. me by a gener half a generation there on the chuck All right, norris. well you should I just see came back for own, the memes <laughs> you should see it for your own edification uh david carradine chuck norris lone wolf mcquade but there's a scene where they he's got a supercharged bronco they beat him up dig a hole with the tractor bury him alive or like left him for dead put him in his bronco put the bronco in the ditch and then bury it to you know he, he's gonna suffocate and die and he Boy, is that complex. wakes up he wakes up he has for some reason he has like a six pack of beer in his car he cracks the beer open takes a swig dumps it on his forehead like wash his face and then puts that that uh bronco into gear and drives it out of this like you know, car grave. Oh, here we got and, the scene. The scene is on YouTube. Good news, folks. Oh yeah, the scene okay. is on the tubes. Up oh, there's the beer crack. Yep, got the beer crack going on. Oh, there's some nice classic trucks in this one, 1983. And then he drives it just right out of the hole. That's right. Cool. How yeah, cool. I didn't, want to test who, that. Who buried a? Didn't someone just bury who a car? Who we buried a? Did you try to drive it out? No, because I don't. It didn't. I, did I, it run afterwards? I think they. Yeah, I think they unburied it and then it and then it ran. Oh my god, he is just driving this. <laughs> <laughs> this YouTuber. Uh, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, this YouTuber Tyler Hoover buried a Range oh Rover. Oh my god! It in, blasted uh, out of there. 
That was a pretty good scene. I like that. that. Was, That's it, fun. It didn't even just like crawl gear for it. It was like launch. It was like a submarine, like <laughs> yeah. Hunt for Red October. Like exactly, yeah. Like it, was going, like it was like doing 60 miles an hour and hit a ramp. <laughs> It was a Tesla 100D. That's your drunk. that's your optimum <laughs> launch. Oh man! Well, this sound this show sounds like a lot of fun, Tori. Thanks for uh, thanks yeah. for coming on. We, Motor Trend we, app, Motor yeah, Trend on demand, Motor Trend all the things, right? Thank you for having me. This was fun. Um, are you uh, once you when it's convenient for you and your uh, you know all this weirdo Delta stuff dies down, you come by, you do the the in studio uh, show, hang out with us for oh, a while, and we'll bullshit absolutely. more. Absolutely. Yeah, would love that. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, when is this? When is this premiering? So is it up now? August fourth. August fourth. All right, Tori Faye Hadley trip. and BC Ezrioha, our boy, uh, who builds crazy fucking shit, uh, busting <laughs> motor <laughs> myths on uh, on the Motor Trend on demand on Motor Trend app, all those places you watch Motor Trend things. Thanks, Tori. Thank you very much. And yeah, uh, for thank the live you guys. Folks, we are back tomorrow. Steve Dynan, uh, famous BMW tuner, racer, uh, now has a tuning company called Carbon. He's on at 1030 a.m. Uh, if you're not listening to the show live, this means absolutely nothing. Uh, but that's, <laughs> our, that's our show. We will see you guys later. Bye. <laughs>